Secretary of State John Kerry isn't happy about Putin's actions in Ukraine, and the markets aren't taking it too well either. Emerging markets fell the most in a month as Russia's occupation of Crimea spurred the worst sell-off in the MISEX index since 2008. That's Russia's benchmark equity index. U.S. and European markets also falling on all the global uncertainty that we're discussing here today. And for more, we'll get Wall Street's take on the turmoil. Hans Humes, Grey, Greylock Capital Management Chairman and CEO, is with us, as well as Jay Pulaski, J2Z Advisory uh, President and Founder. Great to have you guys uh, here because you both have so much experience investing in emerging markets. Uh, let me ask for your take on what's going on. I know you, Hans, have a Ukrainian uh, guy in your office. You've been talking with people on the ground there. And you have already made investments. I'm not sure if you're still... Uh, live there, but what do you think about the situation as it's developing? Well, I mean, geopolitically, it's really tricky. Um, I think the U.S. and and the U.K. have a big political issue in the in '94 when the Ukraine gave up their nuclear weapons. The U U.S. and U.K. Uh, signed diplomatic papers saying that they'd protect the borders. So there's certainly some huge potential implications with Iran. I think. Right, well, clearly that's all gone in the trash. Well, you know, I mean, let's see. That, why do you think the U.S. and the U.K. are being so strident? It's because they're on the hook for this. Um, I think that the, on the market side, what we found really fascinating is that, um, you know, we did take a position in the bonds. You were nice enough to call it a hero, hero trade, and maybe calling things a hero trade before they so come to an end. It sure was if you sold on that day. <laughs> yeah, it actually would have worked. You bought Ukraine debt. We bought Ukrainian debt a couple of weeks ago. We actually mm -hmm. scaled in a bit more. But the way things transpired over the weekend with Yanukovych le leaving mm -hmm. and the Russians coming in certainly threw things into a bit of turmoil. What's interesting is yeah, Russian, yields must be going way up. They're, what, they're what not they as bonds didn't fall as much as they did a week mm -hmm. and a half ago. So the market Shocking. is looking. Well, think about this. If there is a transition, it's going to have to be, you know, the West is going to have to step up with this now. And I mean, so there's no the way you can cut it, cut it loose. To itself, the U.S. and the EU. Um, in, in terms of payment capacity, the latest stress set to test that just came out said that with a 45 percent devaluation yeah. and a 5 percent I mean, contraction, you still have debt. It, to it makes sense. How can we not get involved, Jay Pulaski? I mean, in other words, are we going to let Putin uh, get away with yet another? Uh, well, I, another and forget I, Iraq I, I, and I Afghanistan. I mean, this is the real Syria? place to get involved, and Georgia, right? Don't forget Georgia. Well, I, I actually think this is, this is the exact wrong question. I think the question is who wants to yoke themselves to the Ukraine? The Ukraine is a bankrupt country, and neither the EU nor the U.S. nor Russia certainly wants to take on those liabilities. Well, apparently so I Russia think does, because you know what? He's got a pretty important uh, warm water port there in Sebastopol. Well, of course, yes, China. that that's he's, an issue. So he but, needs that for his name. Okay, but I'm talking, we're talking markets, not not national security. So my thinking so is So you're, you're that, saying why would anybody want to be in... Ukraine? Well, why would anyone want to pony up the money that's going to be necessary to sustain the Ukraine? And I think what this means is that Russia, or the opportunity, and I'd love hands... Hans' thought on this. The opportunity is to short the ruble. Whether Russia goes in to the Ukraine and fights, the ruble is going to fall. If Russia just kind of occupies part of the Ukraine, the ruble is going to fall. This is this is ruble negative, and that is at least within the Ukraine and Russia. That to me is the investment. Yeah, I differ on your point. Why would anybody want uh, to be involved with this? Because I think it goes beyond economic. It's political. However, I agree with you. The idea that the ruble is going to fall anyway. You look at this. Let's ask It's Hans not about good it. for them. What do you think? Well, it's interesting. You know, I, th I think whatever you see Russia doing, you have to realize they're really not negotiating from a position of strength. It's weakness. I mean, they've got fewer and fewer cards in their hand, and playing this hard, um, it's. Uh, you, I would agree. I don't think you need. Uh, you're looking at, at a bullish situation from Russia, regardless. And what this does elsewhere, I mean, I think it's it's very negative for the broad emerging markets. It's very anti-growth. It's very stagflationary. You're having emerging market currencies decline while the price of their major inputs, food and fuel, are going up in more expensive dollars. So the outcome for this globally is very anti-growth, and I think it has real implications, not so much for in the Ukraine or Russia, but I think the implications are much wider in terms of treasuries, how appealing they are, the dollar, uh, Japan, things of that nature. That, to me, is where, the, where one should cast their eye.